I missed you guys. Okay, it's really only been like not that long since I've seen you, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> today we're gonna um, finish 5.3. Um, and it's word problems with all of these like complex fractions and stuff. Um, it gets, I have to warn you, it gets a little weird. It gets a little funky. So I really recommend paying attention um, and really kind of making sure that you understand each step as I go. I'm going to try to explain it as best I can. If you have questions in class, then I will go over it there as well. Um, okay. So um, it's strictly going to be examples, um, just because I think that will make more sense to you for this section. So, um, all right, most of them are going to be distance equals rate times time problems, okay, which hopefully you guys already know that equation. Um, but in case you don't, in physics, your distance is equal to your rate times your time. Um, so if I'm going 45 miles an hour and I drive for one hour, I've gone 45 miles. Okay. Um, so anyways, example one, Chuck Norris's average speed on his way to work is 45 miles an hour and his average speed on the way home is 45 miles an hour. Don't worry, it's on foot. What is Chuck's average speed for the entire trip? Round to the nearest tenth. Okay, so our setup for this problem is we have to start with two separate equations for his trip on the way to work and then his trip on the way um, home from work, okay? Um, no, it's not going to be just 40 plus 45 divided by 2 because um, you're not spending the same t amount of time going each speed. So when he goes 40 miles an hour, he's not... Um, spending as much time, or he's spending more time going 40 miles an hour than he is going 45 miles an hour. So it's not just a simple 45 plus 40. Um, so you have to set up your equations first for the trip there and the trip back. Okay, so we know that distance equals rate times time, and my distance there I'm going to call d sub t. All right, so my first equation is d sub t equals r sub t times t sub t. Okay, so the distance on the way there is equal to the rate on the way there times the time on the way there. We don't know how much time it took him. We don't know the distance. Okay, but we also, we do know the rate, so we can plug that in. Let's do that. Okay, next we want the, um, the equation for the, dis for the distance, rate times time, on the way back. So I'm going to call that d sub t equals my rate, or sorry, my d sub b times my rate on the way back, times the time on the way back. Okay, kind of like that. Um, so, we do know the rate on the way back as well. It was 45 miles an hour. Okay, so the nice thing is the distance on the way there and the distance on the way back, that is going to be the same, right? Because, you know, the distance isn't changing. Um, so actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call that D. I'm not even going to have a d sub t or a d sub b. So I'm just going to write it as just a plain old d. Okay, next we need the equation that is eventually going to be our big equation that we're going to solve for, okay, which is our overall, um, our overall distance equals rate times time. So um, let's write that down. So I'm going to have d sub o just to keep them all separate, don't worry, it's just notation, d sub o equals r sub o, t sub o, where those are all my overall distances, overall rate, overall time, okay? Now, remember, my overall distance is just going to be there and back, so it's going to be 2 times the distance that we already established over here. So I'm just going to replace my d sub 0, or d sub o, as 2d with no subs. So far, so good? I hope so. Okay, um, so here's the next thing. So R0, right, this thing here, that's what we really are aiming for. That's what we really want to solve for. So what I need to do is I need to write my time overall in terms of 
D because if I have three different variables, I'm not going to be able to solve it. But it just so happens, and you'll find out later why, um, if I write T in terms of D, it'll eventually eliminate one of the variables and then we can solve for R. Okay, so at this point, I am going to solve for my overall time, which is basically my time there and my time back added together, right? So I'm just going to solve for that. So just, you know, one thing at a time, because I told you this is complicated, right? Um, your overall time is your time um, on your way there plus the time on the way back. And now I just need to solve the other equations to find out what the time there equals in terms of D and what the time back in terms of D is. So um, if I go back to my original two equations, these two, right, I can just divide both sides by 40 and by 45 in each equation and then get my T um, there and back. Okay, so I'm going to end up with my D over 40 equals T sub there, and my D over 45 is going to be my time back. So I'm just going to replace those in the equation that we were trying to solve. It's like a massive system of equations, kind of. Okay, now we just need to solve for our rate, our overall rate. Um, so. I'm going to leave that on the right hand side. I'm going to divide both sides by that funky D over 40 plus D over 45. When I do that, my uh, right side cancels. And then on my left side, I have 2D over that D over 40 plus D over 45. Okay, now it's a complex fraction that we need to simplify. Um, I personally, First, would find a common denominator in the bottom, um, <laughs> the denominator of the denominator. Um, <laughs> don't you love this stuff? Um, so we want to find a common denominator of those two fractions. So 40 and 45, what's the least common denominator of those two? All right, just as a side note, um, in order to find that, what I would do is say, well, 40 is 8 times 5. And 45 is 9, oops, 9 times 5, right? Um, and so the least common denominator is going to be 8 times 5 times 9, okay, times 9. So I have to multiply the first fraction by 9 over 9, and I have to multiply the second fraction by 8 over 8. And then we should get our common denominator which is 360, so then we would write it as 9D over 360 plus 8D over 360, and now that they have a common denominator, I can add the two together. So I have 9D plus 8D, which is 17D, all over 360. Whew, isn't that fun? Okay, so my new equation, or my modified equation, simplified equation, is that our overall, our overall rate is 2D over 17D over 360. So then we use our complex fraction info. If you need that, go back and watch the complex fraction thing again um, video. But I'm going to rewrite it as 2D over 1 divided by 17D over 360. And I'm going to do my outsides over my insides. So um, I have 360 times 2D all over 17D. And the nice thing is, like I said before, this eliminates D. R0 equals that, D over D. And now I have my overall rate is 360 times 2 divided by 17. And then we can just plug that in our fancy. So I have 2 times 360, which is 720, divided by 17, and I get my average speed, his average speed, to be 42.35 miles per hour on. And that is my answer. Yay! Um, okay, <laughs> I'm going to do one more example just so you, re you know, re see the process um, on a different problem. But um, they're all, pretty much all very similar to that. Okay, you got an auto race, has eight laps, 
A driver completes the first three laps at an average speed of 185 miles an hour and the remaining laps at an average of 200 miles an hour. Okay. Let D represent the length of one lap. Write an expression in terms of D that represents the time in hours that it takes the driver to complete the race. Okay, so this is still similar to the first question. Um, so you want to kind of set up your distance equals rate times time for the first three laps and then the second three laps, or then the second five laps. Okay, so for the first three laps, you have distance equals rate times time, but since you've let D <laughs> represent the length of one lap, then you have 3D equals your rate times your time. And we do know that the first three laps had an average speed of 185 miles an hour. Okay, so I'm going to replace my R sub 1, so this is like the first leg, um, with 185. And then I'm going to have the same similar equation for my second leg, I guess. Um, when you take the five laps at 200 miles an hour. Um, okay, so that's our starting point. Um, and then we said, it says we want an expression in terms of D that represents the time in hours that it takes the driver to complete the race. So the time overall will be time one plus time two, right? And so I just want to, and they want it in, in terms of D, so I'm going to divide um, this first equation. I'm going to divide both sides by 185. And so that I get T1 equals 3D over 185. And then I replace that. And I get T2 equals 5D over 200. OK? And so then we can replace those in the other equation. So I now have that my overall time is equal to 3D over 185 plus 5D over 200. However, so this could be the answer, but I know I'm going to have to use it later and I'm going to have to do it anyways. So I'm going to um, find a common denominator and then um, simplify it, combine it and make it one single fraction. So first I'm going to simplify 185 and 3 don't have any factors in common, so I can't cancel anything there. But I can divide out a 5 from both the numerator and denominator on this one. Um, so 200 divided by 5, I end up with d over 40. Now I need to find a common denominator. So as a side note, I'm going to break up 185 um, into its prime factors. And then I'm going to do the same for 40. I'm going to start with 40 because it's easier. <laughs> okay, 40 is 8 times 5 which is um, 4 times 2, or 2 times 2 times 2. Urgh! I hate you right now. Not you. Sorry. My iPad. <laughs> um, 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Okay. Now let's break up 185. Now I know 185 has to be divisible by 5, so I'm going to start with that and see what I have. 37. <laughs> okay. 37 is prime, so that was easy. Um, so I have 185 breaks up into 5 and 37. So what that means is my common denominator is 5 times 37 times 8. Okay, um, so we're going to need to multiply this first fraction by 8 and the second fraction by 37, over 37, obviously, and 8 over 8. So when I multiply by 8 over 8 and 37 by th over 37, I end up with 24d over 1480 plus 37d over 1480. So when I combine the numerator, keep the denominator, my final answer for part A is 61d over 1480 equals my overall time. So now I've done the majority of the work for part B. Um, it says what's the average speed during the race near to the nearest miles per hour. Um, I just want to set up my distance equals rate times time thing again. Um, but in this case, my distance um, is going to be 8D because remember D was uh, one lap and the entire race is eight laps. So I end up with 8D equals my rate overall times my time overall, which I already figured out is 61D over 1480. Divide both sides by 61D over 1480. Now I'm going to rewrite 8D as 8 over one, or 8D over 1. Do outsides over insides and then simplify. When you simplify, the d's cancel and you end up with 194 miles per hour. Yay!